Brown. With the 65th pick well, in the Vincent. 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Andre Sisco, defensive back, Syracuse. All right, are you? Troy Vincent from the league front office announces the third round choice, Andre Sisco out of Syracuse. Yeah, coming off of an injury, Rich, but football intelligence, ball production, as good as you'll see in this safety class from Cisco. He's got outstanding eyes and range, especially from the middle of the field. My buddy Bucky Brooks likes to say from the top of the Christmas tree, that's where you can line him up, and that's where he'll be, a true roaming free safety. And he should start right away at the safety position for Jacksonville. Hey, Minnesota! Are you ready? With the 66th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Kellen Mon, quarterback, Texas A&M. Oh! Where it is, Kellen Mon, Texas A&M. The Your arrow thoughts, just, DJ. The arrow just keeps pointing up with him, Rich. He's got a very live arm. You saw him get better each and every year, culminating in that Senior Bowl MVP performance. The arm strength is not an issue at all. You see him push the ball vertically down the field. He's got this quick twitch to him. When you when you see it, you don't see it all the time, but there are times where he doesn't have a lot of space to operate, and he can get that ball out. He's got a loose arm as he's falling off a throw here. Watch what he's still able to get on this football down the field. Again, you can see that, that just live, loose arm from Kellen Mond. Reading the defense, got a little scissors route here. See it, identify it, put the ball out there over the top, nicely done. You can tell he trusts what he sees. That confidence grew throughout his career. This is what I wanted to see a little bit more of. He's a great athlete. He wants to hang in there inside the pocket. He shows you glimpses of that athleticism to make plays like that. I would like to see him incorporate a little bit more of that, Charles. I think he's got it in his game. But I like the fact he just gets better every time you see him. Gets better. He has the mind for it. Joel, underrated athlete. Yeah. But here's the other part. Went from Kevin Sumlin's offense to Jimbo Fisher's. And by the time he was done, he was spitting it all back to Jimbo before Jimbo could jump on him after a, after a mistake. I just, and guys, you guys have heard me say this countless times. The last 10 quarterbacks to win Super Bowls, you go back to what they were as college players. And on average, those 10 quarterbacks had 35 starts and 1,200 passing attempts well this guy fits in that experience mold 44 starts rich and 1300 attempts he's got the experience he started as a freshman way back like you said Charles and so this is a guy that's got all the athleticism can really rip it and is very smart so, uh, first of all I hope y'all having some fun because this is crazy out here this draft is awesome much love to the traveling Texans my guy right here 24 years of marriage, happy anniversary to his wife. I just found out I walked across the stage. Show his wife some love. Show his wife some love. Cleveland, what's happening? I'm gonna take 10 seconds to tell y'all a quick story. My dad is from New York, but he loves the Cleveland Browns. When I was a kid growing up, the brownies this, the brownies that, them brownies gonna be all right this year. When I got drafted, he wanted the Browns to draft me. I didn't get that lucky. I got drafted by the Texans, so it's all good, baby. All right. With the 67th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, my Houston Texans select Davis Mills, QB from Stanford. Go Texans, baby. All right, so now what's up with that? I mean, what's up with the Texans not having any choices in the first and second round? And then when they finally get one, they choose a quarterback. What is up with that? I cannot stress this question enough. What is up with that? Let me, hold on. Let me go ahead and put another accent on, on another one of the words. What is up with that? Can you decipher at all what is up with that? Did I did I make my question any plainer to you? I, I think you're wondering what's up with that. What is <laughs> up crystal. with that? Crystal yeah, clear. This, this is what uh, is everybody in the National Football League believes it's only a matter of time before Deshaun Watson is a former Houston Texan. 
So this, to me, is finding a quarterback that you like. Now, obviously, you're not going to get Deshaun Watson level player here with Davis Mills, but there's a lot of ability, and we'll give him his due in just a moment here. But to me, it's all about a timing with everything that's going on from what's going on with, with Deshaun in a legal perspective. Once that is exhausted, there's not an expectation from anybody in the league that he's going to be back in Houston. Everybody assumes that's taking place. The Miami Dolphins collected a bunch of picks in next year's draft. A lot of people assume that was because they thought this might take some time and they would have the ammunition at that point in time to do something with Deshaun Watson. And I'm sure there's other teams lined up as well. But this is just another example of where this is all headed. I think we can all see it. From my perspective, they got a quarterback that has starting upside, right? This is not a guy you're just drafting for depth. This is not a guy that you're just drafting and you're hoping that, oh, you know, maybe it'll work out someday in the future. He was the number one quarterback in the country coming out in 2017. He clearly has the ability, Davis Mills does, and the talent. Only 11 starts. That's why I thought he should have gone back to school, Joe. And guess who they have there if Deshaun Watson isn't playing? Tyrod Taylor. Another uh, guy I, who's a play, I, please, another though. guy's a placeholder Look, for, I, for a quarterback in case they get to that spot. The 68th draft. pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Jalen Mayfield, guard, Michigan. Jalen Mayfield was somebody, one of the few left. I think one of the two I have left in my top 50 that was hanging out there. You see the strength when he can get underneath defenders, particularly in the Minnesota game. You saw him forklift guys. Has some issues with balance at times, but there's flashes of first round ability from Jalen Mayfield, and I believe he's going to be a longtime starter. More than likely will end up kicking inside the guard, is my guess. Good evening, Ohio. With the 69th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joseph Osai, linebacker, Texas. Yeah, Joseph Osai has experience playing off the ball as well as rushing off the edge. He put on a show at his pro day with his explosiveness, a 4'6", 240, 41 and a half inch vertical. He's very explosive, he's just a little bit tight and stiff. You see it when he gets to the top of his rush, he has a tough time cornering. But he's another guy, we've talked about some players like this that just play extremely hard. The effort is outstanding to chase and pursue. Had a little bit of a rough one against Tevin Jenkins in that Oklahoma State game, but there are other games where with his explosiveness, he can take over and dominate. I loved Osai because he moved positions and he was just so raw this last year. DJ, he was really a linebacker and out of position last year, then moved down to the edge. And so early in the season against TCU, maybe wasn't that explosive pass rusher that you wanted. Late in the season, he started getting there with new defensive coordinator Chris Ash and Michael Huff, right? This guy, we all know Michael Huff, wonderful player. He works at Texas now and he says, this guy makes me proud to be a Longhorn. He's that type of a person. And he's with the 70th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Brady Christensen, tackle BYU. So Brady Christensen has now been added to the mix in Carolina. And if you watch Zach Wilson, you appreciated that offensive line from BYU, the job they did protecting him. Tremendous agility, especially aggressive in pass pro from Brady Christensen. Likes to what we call jump set guys. He gets right on them. They can't do anything about it. So he closes down that space. He's a fun player to watch. He'll compete right away with Greg Little at the left tackle spot. So the Josh pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. The New York Giants select Aaron Robinson, defensive back, UCF. He's an Alabama transfer, Rich, so you can give him half of a point for this one. Uh, but Aaron Robinson, somebody that played inside at the nickel position. And when you talk to the coaches, they say because he likes being in the middle of all the action. He's very physical. He's very tough. He ran 4-3-8, so he's got plenty of speed. But it'll be interesting to see where he's used. He has the size to play on the outside, but he's just been much more comfortable, Charles, nestled in that slot. That's been a fun part for him, but remember they picked up a Dory Jackson in the offseason. So if they want him to go back in that slot, they've got a guy who's played on the outside. They just haven't been able to keep a Dory Jackson healthy in Tennessee. If he's able to be healthy and team with James Bradbury, then Aaron Robinson can go inside and go where he's comfortable and have an impact. Hello. 
with the 72nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. The Detroit Lions select Aleem McNeil, defensive tackle, NC State. All right, Aleem McNeil adding to the trenches. We knew when you saw Dan Campbell get in that room and he's sitting in there talking about biting kneecaps, they were going to go big guys, and that's what they've done in this draft with Panay Sewell, Levi Onwuzuriki, and now with Aleem McNeil, who reminded me a lot of Javon Hargrave when I studied him. He's just a big, powerful pocket pusher inside. He eats blockers. You just can't move him. And I love this fact, guys. When he played high school baseball, he was a 6'2", 270-pound outfielder. Joel, in your baseball experience, do you have a comp for that one? No, I don't. That's that, that's stupid. Oh, it, there's the video. This. Oh, my goodness. Hey, 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 Joel, that's not slow pitch softball either. No, it's that's, not. Yeah. By, by the way, did you see where the third baseman was playing? Oh, yeah. On the field. outfield grass. <laughs> there's no way he's getting in on the infield grass. When Elite McNeil was hitting in high school, the shift was a little different. The shift was back, not, not <laughs> over exactly on position. exactly right. You know, his athleticism, by the way, it shows up on the baseball diamond, but he was also a linebacker as well as a running back in high school, and he only showed up at 260 pounds, so he's put on weight, and that explosiveness is still there. I have a question with the new uh, number rule. Can he keep 29 as a defensive lineman? 73rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Milton Williams, defensive end, Louisiana Tech. This is a dynamic player who's fun to watch. You want to talk about explosiveness, getting off the ball. He's got some big time shock in his hands. In other words, when he gets his hands on you, you see bodies go flying. He just doesn't have the length. He's got shorter arms. So that was the reason why you see him here. But man, he is explosive. You can line him up off the edge. You can put him inside. His quickness is just no match. People have no answer for him inside. And the sacks, when they come, they come in bunches with this kid. I'll be anxious to see how they're going to use him. I talked about with Greg Rousseau how you can put him inside and clear the runway. I could see something similar happen here with Milton Williams. With the 74th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington Football Club selects Benjamin St. Juice, defensive back, Minnesota. We got a Canadian here, Benjamin St. Juice, got a little bit of a hockey background. He is an enormous corner with very long arms. Somebody who a lot of teams were targeting here, a third round, talked to a bunch of teams. This was their third round target, so this is a good pickup. Very smooth, fluid athlete. Started at Michigan, had some hamstring issues, and had to transfer to Minnesota because the folks at Michigan thought, ah, we don't know if we can get back on the field. Went to Minnesota, did a heck of a job. What's up, Cleveland? I'm here, and with the 75th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Osa Odigizua, defensive tackle from UCLA. I'm a fan of Osa Odigizua. When you're an interior player and you're a little bit undersized, I mean, you're a little bit shorter, but you have tremendously long arms like he does, with 34-inch arms, he can play with length and leverage. He's a three-time state wrestling champ, which we talked about it on the offensive side of the ball. I love it with your defensive tackles as well. I had a great week down in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. It was very disruptive, a lot of penetration, a lot of pressure. Does a nice job with that little jump swim move, Joel. That's his go-to. Well, and, and you know, those big fellas, sometimes they get gassed, right? And they got to come off the field. Well, that wrestling background has really helped him from a cardio standpoint. He played 60 snaps per game, guys. He got well over 20 starts in a row, 27 straight starts. Uh, I really like his toughness in the middle. And okay. you guys, oh, go ahead. Rick. No, it's okay, because uh, new one. It's a little test drive. Who that? Who that? With the 76th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Paulson Adebo, defensive back Stanford. Well, there's the DB. And I think he walks right into a starting position opposite of Marshawn Lattimore. Again, I thought they might address this early. End up getting a really interesting player here in Paulson Adebo who has a ton of ball production. A little bit tight, you see that in some of the change of direction stuff, but especially earlier in his career, this guy got his hands on a lot of footballs. He can really find it and play it down the field. You see the recovery speed. 
He ran in the mid four fours. I like him better in press coverage. Charles yeah. knows, knows, let him get his hands on you and go. And that's why when you were talking about between him and Melifonwu, this fits better what Dennis Allen wants on the defensive side of the ball. Adebo getting up in the faces of receivers, challenging every catch, every attempted pass that comes his way, as does Marshawn Lattimore. That fits exactly what they're looking for. He does have great ball production, a lot of pass breakups. You gotta have two things when you're going nose to nose, right? When you're gonna play that bump coverage as a corner, you gotta be confident, number one. You gotta have strong hands. He's got both of those things as evidence is those that ball production that you were talking about, the PBUs and the INT. With the 77th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Josh Palmer, wide receiver, Tennessee. Well, how about that? A Tennessee ball comes off the board via Canada through California and back to Tennessee. And you see right there, that little subtle push at the end. Watch how he makes his movements, and the body is going to be involved in a lot of what he does. His biggest game this year, guys, I think where he made his bones. Georgia's got four guys likely going to be drafted out of the secondary. How about what he did with DJ Daniel on two big catches over the top that in, in press man coverage. That one right there coming back inside, having good ball skills, locating it, high pointing it. He's not going to blow you away with his speed. But he's not as slow as Jawan Jennings was coming out. Guys competitive for the football. DJ, when your two best tapes are Alabama Georgia and Georgia and Alabama, <laughs> I was you know, to like say. everyone's like, oh, wait, and they, it makes you sit up in your chair and you, and you get in there, right? And that was Palmer for me. And, and he was a basketball first athlete in his youth. He comes out there and you see those ball skills when he gets over and the he top. He got Patrick Sertan, one of the few people yeah. that got him this last year on a deep ball. And one of the other things, a little bit uncertain quarterbacking during exactly. his time in Tennessee, exactly. where he had to make a lot of adjustments that way that as was, well. By the way, that was putting it really well. Think and, about and it too, lightly. though. The Chargers have paid a lot of people. So you've got Mike Williams and that decision coming up here before too long. So now you've got another guy who's that 50-50 big wide receiver specialist to go along with Keenan Allen. And a lot of people wanted the Chargers to get that dart, to get that flyer. Yeah. Josh Palmer's not that flyer, but he's going to be one of those strong receivers, similar to a Keenan Allen, a Mike Williams, go play some of those jump balls. Texas A&M earlier this round. With the 78th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Chaz Surratt, linebacker, North Carolina. This is an interesting story with Chaz Surratt. He began his career as a quarterback. Rarely do you ever see the quarterback to linebacker move. Can you imagine Kurt Warner trying to play linebacker? No shot whatsoever. This is a very fluid mover, a smooth athlete. Here he is playing a little quarterback. He's a lefty. Hanging in the pocket right there for the Tar Heels. But he made the smart move. He embraced it when the staff approached him about moving to linebacker. And it's not just the speed and the athleticism you would expect. He's got some physicality to him and a little bit of thump coming downhill as you see him shoot gaps, working through the line of scrimmage and bringing his feet on contact for some good size hits. He's got range and athleticism. He can really, really run. You see that show up on every tape. The instincts and coverage, you would imagine as a former quarterback, you're pretty comfortable and have a good sense of route combinations and jumping routes to get in front and make plays on the ball. He does that. So He's also a very good blitzer, I would add. He, so he and Anthony Barr can run Wildcat? There pretty much. Go. There you go. As a former running back. Yep, good, that's a good <laughs> point. And now here comes... How long, how long before Kurt Warner texts me about oh, mean, he, 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 You couldn't see Kurt play in the middle and coming downhill? I don't know. Kurt we, Kurt sent us a text of what he's up to tonight. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think he's worried. I don't think he's too worried about what we're saying <laughs> no. right now. There's, that's what I'm saying. There we go. Hey, in all seriousness, rest in peace to the late, great Willie Brown. I have the pleasure of carrying on this tradition with the Raiders. And reminding everybody, next weekend is Mother's Day. Call your mom, go drive, pick up groceries, tell her you love her, tell her you miss her. Take care of your moms, man, they run this thing. With that being said, with the 79th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Malcolm Kuntz, defensive end, Buffalo. So what a beautiful tribute by Alec Ingold to the late Willie Brown. We got another one for you right now. We got another pick. 
And with the 80th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Divine Diablo, linebacker, Virginia Tech. What do you think of the picks, Dan? Yeah, back-to-back -back defense here. Let's start with Malcolm Kuntz from Buffalo, who ironically, if I was going to give him a comp, I would go with Yannick Ngakwe, who the Raiders have already added. He's a very similar player, one of the better pure rushers, just in terms of his ability to bend. We talked about so many of these guys being a little bit tight at the top of their rush. Not this kid. He can really wrap and bend around the top. He's got some speed to power. That first step quickness shows up as a pass rusher. I think that's what he's going to be, a, a DPR, a designated pass rusher, because he does get swallowed up a little bit in the run game. So you'll see him in sub packages early on in his career. And now we get to Divine Diablo, their second pick of these back-to-back -back picks out of Virginia Tech. He's a strong safety who some teams have written up as a will linebacker. So it'll be interesting to see how the Las Vegas Raiders want to deploy him. One thing's for sure, he's going to be dominant on special teams. 17 special teams tackles. This kid can really, really run. He ran 4-4-4. He delivers some huge hits, some physicality you see there at that second level of the defense. Had a really nice interception against Clemson down in the red zone, working against Trevor Lawrence. And Charles, to me, they got faster on defense with these two picks. And they absolutely needed to because that's what Gus Bradley needs on to run his defensive scheme. But Joel, what's interesting to me about the Diablo pick is they did announce him as a linebacker. We're seeing more and more of this, the Mark Barons of the world yeah. turning into Will linebackers. But they took Tanner Muse last year out of Clemson, and they were going to convert him from safety to linebacker. He missed his entire rookie year due to injury. That could be the same thing. Last, Count O'Neill, Dallas. Let's talk, talk, talk about him also going to Will linebacker. Well, the, the thing that jumps out to me is at Virginia Tech, he played that rover position, right? So he can move down, right? And we and But guys, we all know Mike. You know, and, and and John Gruner to a maybe lesser extent. Football character jumps out to me for Diablo, and that's like those are the type of guys that they love. He was a team captain. The guys loved him. His work ethic, all that size, speed. That kind of screams my, Mike Mayock to me. He's a pick that I think will fit very well with the Las Vegas Raiders. That said, uh, somebody named Diablo should be drafted Raider. by uh, the Raiders. <laughs> Shout out to the Miami Dolphins organization for giving the opportunity to be here. Shout out to Caleb Thornhill in particular. That being said, with the 81st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Hunter Long, tight end, Boston College. Well, Brian Flores is the Boston College guy. He goes back to Boston College to get his tight end here in Hunter Long. But he's one of the more complete tight ends. In other words, you can use him in the run game. He's more than adequate as a blocker. He's got some short area quickness and a ton of catches in combat areas with traffic as the family is fired up and celebrating as he starts his NFL career with the Miami Dolphins. He actually played through a rib injury. Really smart guy. Builds computers in his garage, right? Jeff Hafley just raved and raved about his intelligence. And by the way, he had more catches than even Kyle Pitts as FBS tight ends. He led the nation. And so now Mike Gusecki gets to be a true move tight end. Hunter Long, much more of the traditional walk. The 82nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Deami Brown, wide receiver, North Carolina. The theme of speed continues today. You see the comparison there is Terry McLaurin. So very interesting to see where he ends up going. The vertical speed, he can track the ball very easy down the field. Average almost 20 yards a catch, or at 20 yards a catch this year. He gets on top in every single game that you watch, and you see it right here. Once he gets on top, he pulls away and tracks it like a center fielder down the field. Tons of big plays. There were some issues in terms of working back downhill as a route runner needs to improve there, but Terry McLaurin had some of those similar issues, and he's more than figured it out there with the Washington football team. I just love Brown's production, right? He leaves North Carolina as the only wide receiver in school history to go 50 catches and 1,000 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. So even though he's had some issue with some drops here and there, this guy is a production machine. And don't forget, they added Curtis Samuel in the offseason from Carolina, so he's your inspector gadget guy as well as being able to be a receiver downfield. That allows McLaurin to do his work on the perimeter, and now they're expecting Dami Brown to fill that role as well. With the 83rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Tommy Trimble, tight end Notre Dame. 
Oh, this is one of my favorite players in this draft because of his physicality. He's a dominant blocker. He's very explosive. He just didn't see a lot of footballs in the passing game. There are a lot of similarities to George Kittle when he was coming out of Iowa. Wow. Because you see the traits are there. And look at the physicality and look at the way they use him at Notre Dame. At fullback, just lead up in the hole and you see a big time collision. Then they'll line him up as a wing back. You'll see him drive the defender right off the ball, take him right off the field here, working against the Duke Blue Devils. You want him to crack down on the defensive end? He has no problem doing that as well. Again, every game, they deployed him in these areas and just use him as a weapon in the run game. You see him pulling up to the linebacker here and taking care of it there as well. All that we've just seen is him blocking. There aren't a lot of opportunities he had catching the football. Here he is working out to the corner on one last one. But I'm telling you, you see the flashes. When he gets downfield, he can separate. This dude can really, really run. And he is a classic example of he's going to be a much better pro than what you saw in college. With the 84th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Chauncey Golston, defensive end, Iowa. All right, Golston goes from Iowa. Just made the Kittle rest re reference. By the way, this guy was first team, Big Ten, all Big Ten. He was a captain. He led the team with five and a half sacks. He always locates the ball, and he has long arms, which I think give him a great advantage on the edge. He's great in pursuit, and the coaches love him. In fact, the term that always comes out of Iowa when I'm talking about this guy is positive energy. That's what he's going to bring to the table. With the 85th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Amari Rodgers, wide receiver, Clemson. It's a wide receiver, and it's A. Rodgers. How about Aaron, that? Amari, Rodgers, Rodgers. Rich. What's happening? Look at the comp. Look at the comp. Randall Cobb. It's, oh, a, it's, it's meant a... to be. It was absolutely meant to be. We needed a Rodgers to a Rodgers. Hopefully we have the other Rodgers throwing to this Rodgers because he's fun, man. He gets in the slot. He's very elusive. He's outstanding after the catch. Some teams worked him out at, at running back at that Clemson Pro Day because you see after the catch, he's able to run through tackles. Again, another one of these guys with that toughness to work in the middle of the field. Aaron Rodgers be able to get him the ball and seems there's no fear whatsoever in the way that he plays. He's got strong hands. You see him adjust here and pluck the football. He is a really, really good football player. It's a deep wide, deep wide receiver draft. That's good value. Selection for Minnesota. With the 86th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Wyatt Davis, guard, Ohio State. Continuing to add to that offensive line. And again, you're seeing how good that Ohio State offensive line was. Wyatt Davis, he's got some real knockoff power. He's a physical player, especially in the run game. That's what he does best. Not a, not a premier athlete, but he can generate some movement in the run game, Joel. I mean, they loved him. He opted back into the season after opting out when the Big Ten came back. And Charles, how about the bloodlines for Wyatt Davis? <laughs> the bloodlines are excellent. Look, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison are going to love him. But you mentioned the bloodlines. His father, an actor. Probably saw him in the program. Alvin Mack, linebacker. That's the way he played. Dwayne Davis and his grandfather, the immortal, the great Willie Davis. Green Bay Packers Hall of Famer. One, two, one, two. Take a look at the stage. Y'all know what this is. This has been my team since I was a kid. My name's DMC. I'm the king of the rock. And on the football field, we won't be stopped. The king of the rock, and there is none realer. And there is nothing better than being a Pittsburgh Steeler. With the 87th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kendrick Green, Center, Illinois. Cleveland, I love you. One, two, one, two. Take a look at the stage. Y'all know what this is. 
This has been my team since I was a kid. My name's DMC. I'm the king of the rock. And on the football field, we won't be stopped. The king of the rock, and there is none realer. And there is nothing better than being a Pittsburgh Steeler. With the 87th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kendrick Green, Center, Illinois. Cleveland, I love you. Uh oh, DMC better run. <laughs> After that. Oh, that is great. I, I would love him to lead every one of these picks. Give us a little juice here. Kendrick Green, he's played guard, he can play center. He's a little bit undersized inside. But man, this dude is quick. When he takes angles up to the second level, you can see him cut off linebackers. Ultra, ultra athletic. Be curious to see if he does end up being a center or a guard, Joel. I, I think guard because of his ability to pull with that athleticism, right? He actually was recruited as a defensive tackle. In fact, he was the number two defensive tackle out of Illinois coming out of high school behind A.J. Epinesa, the great defensive end for Iowa that's now in the NFL. But this guy, like you said, lateral quickness for days. I think at guard he fits best because he can utilize that athleticism. I think his best place to compete is at center because J.C. Hassenauer is there, DeCastro, and then they got last year they ended up picking up Kevin Dotson who played well. So I think his best spot to compete early is at center, even if guard might be his best spot. And his organization for, the, for allowing me to be here. With the 88 pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Sermon, running back, Ohio State. Oh boy, this guy's a load. This guy's going to be slashing in this offense. Look out, man. They got a Trey backfield now. They, they got sure two Trey's too. back there. Wow. Trey Sermon, he is, again, a violent runner. You talk about seeking out contact. That's exactly what he does. He'll lower his shoulder and run right through you. Joel, you saw this game up close and personal as you look at this next-gen stat draft score. He, he took over the football game on that evening. You saw him at Oklahoma. He almost looked like two different backs to me. When you watch yeah. him at Oklahoma, then you see him at, o at Ohio State. I thought he just became a much more violent physical runner. Such different styles of run game that those two programs use, right? I mean, at Oklahoma, you're going to use that, that they, they call it that, the, the GT play. They're going to pull the guard and tackle, and you've got to wait, and it's RPOs off of it. Ohio State, boy, you're going to get downhill right at the you. pistol, and it's right at you. 331 yards in that Big Ten championship game. It was an Ohio State single game record. With the 89th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Nico Collins, wide receiver, Michigan. That's what we talked about in the pre-show, Rich. It just came a little bit later than I thought with Nico Collins being a good fit in a draft with a lot of speed. He's one of the few power forwards. As we said with Palmer from Tennessee earlier, a lot of 50-50 balls with Nico Collins down the field you see the back shoulder throws he's able to box out defenders down the field the passes don't always have to be on target he has a great ability to adjust use that big body to shield off defenders down the field and go get the ball down in the red zone high point it make a play he did that for your michigan wolverines and then you want to play off coverage he has that build up speed he ended up running in the four fours and the player you're watching on those highlights is 230 pounds. He's now 215 pounds, so he's moving a little bit better. So you're going to have a deep weapon there for the Houston Texans. Just don't know who's going to be throwing him the football. And DJ, that was really a must, Joel. I feel that way because the Houston Texans receivers, comparatively speaking, are Smurfs right. compared to Nico Collins. Right. You talk about Randall Cobb. You talk about Kiki Cutie, right? You talk about uh, uh, Brandon Cooks. So to get a plus size receiver there who can make plays downfield, Chris Conley's the only guy on the roster who's close to. With the 90th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Patrick Jones, defensive end, Pittsburgh. And Patrick Jones can really rush the quarterback. They had two edge rushers there at Pittsburgh. He's the first one off the board. Did not test that well. Had a little bit of a hamstring. Did not run very fast. But he's a good football player when you study him. He's more he's got that first step quickness and just has a knack as a rusher coming off the edge. 
somebody that when you talk to the folks at the school, not only does he have that production that you see there, they love him as a person. They were going to not, their season was going to be over. The players had left. He was one of them. They ended up getting a game at the last minute. He came back. They did not expect him to come back. He was already a couple days into his training, but he wanted to be there with his guys and finish it up. Well, I mean, it's cheer of the night. With all respect to Dell or to DMC, I'd like to say this is the Browns town, baby. Here we go, Brownies. Here we go. Here we go, Brownies. Here we go. Yes, sir. I love to hear it. With the 91st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Anthony Schwartz. Wide receiver out of Auburn. So Thanks and Google. Wide receiver. And just in case you're wondering, it, it looks like Miles Garrett's been working out in the offseason. <laughs> Anthony Schwartz, wide That's receiver out of Auburn, joins the group. I tell you what, I feel bad for a receiver that tries to press Anthony Schwartz, and I feel bad for that jacket on Miles Garrett <laughs> because both of them are going to have some issues. <laughs> Anthony Schwartz is the, one of the fastest players in college football. Legitimate track speed, rare track speed. Now, he's not a polished or refined receiver. He's not a, a big-time route runner. But what you can do is what you see right here, bubble screens, pitching the ball, just get the ball in his hands and let that track speed take over, Charles. Yeah, and just think about what Kevin Stefanski likes to design for all these guys. And here you're talking about legitimate track speed. That's a 4-2. Look, all of us are announcers, right? Hey, Joel, Joel and Daniel, all of us are announcers. How many times do you hear, oh, he's a legitimate track guy? Do we actually understand what legi legitimate track speed Now we means? do. That's this, legitimate this track speed. Yes. Not what we talk about each and every week. That's the real deal right there. Speaking of that, he was the silver medalist in the IAAF World Championship in the 100, running a 10.07. So that, I mean, I'll that tell you like what, it. I'll tell you what. That's world-class speed. That With the 92nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Monty Rice, linebacker, Georgia. Yeah, you need your linebackers to be able to really run and cover. Monty Rice ended up running in a 4-5-7. He's got outstanding instincts as an inside linebacker, which is absolutely necessary. He's very aware in coverage. He'll get swallowed every now and then when you get up to him, but he doesn't, they don't get up to him very often because he's so quick and athletic. Don't forget Jalen Brown got hurt last year, midway through the year. So this is some reinforcement for a guy who can run. With the 93rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Spencer Brown, tackle, Northern Iowa. This is a big time athlete. The basketball background, you can see it when you watch him. When I had a chance to go watch him work out, I almost asked him, why don't you just go play basketball? You shouldn't be able to be at 6'8 and 311 pounds and move around like this. Again, rare, rare traits. Still developing as a football player. He's going to be a right tackle, in my opinion, at the next level. Plays a little bit high, that's something he can work on, but he's got really quick feet, and what I love about him is he's a finisher. He's got some nasty to him, as you see right there. Great example of it, Charles. This kid's got tremendous upside. Again, not a finished product. Be patient, but it could have a nice payoff. One of my favorite players in this draft when I watched him, because you can see where the potential is, and wait till the finish gets involved, because remember, he opted out last year. But I thought he had a big week at the Senior Bowl, opened up some eyes, and there were a lot of offensive line coaches who said, I want a shot at coaching that kid. Kobe Jones out here, huh? All right. Hey, look, let me tell you something. Y'all can boo all y'all want, but you got to accept it. I got a ring. I got a ring. I got a ring. It is what it is. But... I thank the NFL for giving me the opportunity to do this, and I thank the Baltimore organization for giving me the opportunity to do this. Because as a child, you want to do this. So with the 94th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select from Georgia, Ben Cleveland.
Wow, you. Jacoby Jones announces a Raven pick named Cleveland. <laughs> and he does it with style. And, and we can keep the theme going for the night because we saw the Macho Man earlier. This kid reminds me of Big John Stud when you see him. He is enormous. Six foot six, 340 plus pounds. And there is not an ounce of fat on him. If it doesn't work out in the NFL, he'll be able to go into the wrestling business. But I think he's going to have a long career. He's a mauler, brawler. The Ravens want to beat you up and bully you at the line of scrimmage with their run game. That's exactly what this kid does. I think he's better, Charles, in one of those gap schemes as opposed to asking him to really get on the move lateral in a zone scheme. But that's what Baltimore's going to do. They're going to let him come downhill and get after people. Yeah, he's got enough there that he can go in the short area. But his thing is once he gets on you, drive you, drive you, drive you, finish you. And he's got the big weight on him. He's got the wide base. And Joel, that's what you get when you train on a squirrel diet. Okay? The man likes to get the squirrel, knock it down, and go and hit the weight room. With the 95th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Robert Hainsey, tackle, Notre Dame. Yeah, we're going to see basically the whole Notre Dame offensive line come off the board here. This is the fifth player that they've had here. Quickness and balance, no question. He can play all up and down the line of scrimmage. Did a nice job at the Senior Bowl inside. You see him at right tackle at Notre Dame. I like him better. I think he will be a guard at the next level. He's quick out of his stance. He's outstanding on those combo blocks. And again, I thought he really made some money, guys, during the Senior Bowl. So the Bucks pick last because they win the championship, thanks to Tom Brady, in part. What's going on? Where's my Pats? Where's my Patriots? I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Bob Kraft and the Kraft family for making this possible for me to be here tonight. This is great. I want to thank uh, Bill Belichick and his staff for the great things they are doing up in New England. With the 96th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots, 21-time AFC Eastern champions, 11-time AFC champions, six-time Super Bowl champions, select Ronnie Perkins, defensive end, Oklahoma. This is the last defensive player left in my top 50. This is incredible value for me. Ronnie Perkins can rush the quarterback. He's got some shock in his hands. He's got a nasty little push-pull move. And when you talk to the folks at the school, he's a phenomenal leader. Talk about leadership. It shows up in his effort. Look at him chase down the field. You see it all the time when you watch him. The point of attack, he's got some knockback. He'll get his hands on you. He'll reset the line of scrimmage in the run game. Comes off of it and makes a play on the football as well. When he gets to the top of the rush, look, he's not an elite bend guy, but what you do see is when he clears you early and wins early, he can flatten towards the quarterback. Was a little bit tight when he showed up at his pro day. I think some teams took that a little bit too seriously, got carried away with that, forcing him to drop. Again, I don't know how in the world he's still here at this point in time as you see a violent finish in a rivalry game against Oklahoma State. Joel, I know he missed some time. He was yeah. suspended, but when he came back, he, you felt his impact. There's no doubt, and Lincoln Riley talked at length about that. You know, that defense was not great a couple of years ago, and it hadn't been for a while. And Alex Grinch got brought in as a defensive coordinator to really revamp that defense, talk about speed defense. They desperately needed Ronnie Perkins on the field. And once he got on the field, that leadership won, and then the speed showed up. And they, he was fantastic. Six games, guys, the production off the charts. Ten and a half TFLs, five and a half sacks, Charles. This guy was a monster in those six games. With the 97th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Trey McKitty, tight end, Georgia. Well, we talk about drafting traits. What you see with Trey McQuitty is he's got tremendous speed and athleticism. When I see limited production, he only caught six balls for 108 yards and one touchdown. But when you just watch him run around the field, even when the ball's not coming to him, you see how big he is and you see how smooth and athletic he is. 
you think you got a chance for some upside with this selection. And when you think about the Chargers organization, I'm not putting them in this class, obviously. But once upon a time, they found somebody with not a lot of experience who was pretty oh, athletic. Boy. And they had something oh. they could dream on. I'm not saying he's Antonio Gates rich, but I'm saying as an organization, they've been able to done a great job of developing this position for a long time. And he caught more passes at Florida State before he transferred to Georgia. And remember, that's a big run-heavy offense. They had to go do a lot of that with Stetson Bennett at quarterback before JT Daniels was able to come back from a knee injury, take over, and now they can throw the ball downfield more. But this is a kid who's going to develop and become a much better pass catcher as a pro than his numbers were this past year. With the 98th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Quinn Miners, guard, Wisconsin Whitewater. Now we're talking. Let's roll up the shirt and have a little fun here with Quinn Miners. I've never seen a story like this. This kid was probably a sixth round pick, seventh round pick coming into the season. He didn't have a season. So what he does, he goes and trains with Duke Mannyweather down in Texas and gets an invitation off of a video to go compete at the Senior Bowl. The tape, you saw some big time finishes and you saw some physicality when you watched him on this Wisconsin Whitewater tape. You saw the toughness, but it was not it was not clean. Between these highlights, it wasn't clean play. He got down to Mobile, he literally rolled his sleeves up and his shirt, and he dominated some of the best competition college football had to offer. It wasn't like he was winning reps alone. That's a Diggy Zua right there. He was putting guys on the ground. You've seen a Diggy Zua already come off the board from UCLA. This is on, on Zarike, who we've already seen drafted. I thought he might even sneak into the second round, guys, because offensive line coaches fell in love with him. Charles did that training in the offseason up in Canada. We saw him punching the, logs. Got, got the family business up there. Oh, yeah. Here we, we got video of it. You can see it right now. This is old school. This is taking it rocky right here. This is going to Russia. And you remember when he was a kid, he had to work first and then Look go that. train, right? Because he oh, worked with the shove family. Down that's, trees. that's so good. You know who did that, that kind of training too last year? It was Max Crosby, training with the trees and working on his hand placement. When you want it bad enough, Joel Klatt, you find ways to get the work done and put it in, don't you? Guys, he didn't. Oh, well, look at that. Yeah, this is this is amazing. It's like world's strongest man. He, oh, is it, is he, that shoot? Is that shoot from Vision Quest putting it on, putting the log on his back? That's like Magnus. He's gonna run. That's like Magnus for Minerson. <laughs> With the 99th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Nashawn Wright, defensive back, Oregon State. Yeah, and Deshaun Wright, you talk about Dan Quinn going to the Dallas Cowboys. This is Seattle-style corner. You're talking about somebody that's 6'4", 183 pounds. He is real thin out there. I thought he was probably going to come off the board more fifth, sixth round guys. I thought there were some other bigger corners that would go ahead of him. But this is all about scheme fit. This is in that scheme. They want tall, long corners. You don't get much taller or much longer than Nashawn right there from Oregon State. And one of the things about that is we all know that Seattle – what would, they, what would they do? They take long, long safeties and turn them into corners. This kid is a legit corner, and they got him that way. With the 100th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Elijah Molden, defensive back, Washington. Yeah, Elijah Molden. Someone I've seen a lot of when you've watched Pac-12 over the last several years. He's a nickel. Some people believe he'll be a safety. He's got some versatility there. If you ever want to know where he is on the football field, just find the football because that's where you'll find Elijah Molden. He's tough. You'll see him again work through blocks, get up here into the flat, and he's an outstanding form wrap tackler once he gets in space. Again, fighting through wide receiver blocks. Just get off and show you some effort, physicality. He's going to have to do a lot of that when he's lined up inside as a nickel at the next level. And then the ball skills. Gets his eyes in the backfield. This is a huge play that turned the tide in this game against USC down in the red area. Get your eyes on the quarterback and just takes you right to the football. He's just a very instinctive player. Didn't run all that fast. But this, again, this is somebody that I think is going to find a role on special teams. He's yep. going to find a role on sub downs. He's just going to force his way onto the football field. With the 101st pick, in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Ifatu Melifonwu, defensive back, Syracuse. 
And this is again, we're seeing this big corner trend. We saw it a little bit earlier with Deshaun Wright going to the Dallas Cowboys. I thought Mel Fanu might be gone by now. Just a very smooth mover. Again, a press corner. Somebody that can get to you nose to nose. He can really run. He ended up running in the high four fours. He vertical 41 and a half inches. He flashes some toughness. You will see some big hits. You see him here getting in the backfield. But there were times where there were some missed tackles from off where he closes, had some missed tackles in space, had 10 of those last year. So improve the tackling, but you've got the size, the fluidity, and the athleticism to really develop a player here. With the 102nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Ambry Thomas, defensive back, Michigan. A lot of Wolverines here, Rich, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Plays in the slot. He's at his best to me when he's inside, can't play outside. When he's in off coverage, when he can see it, play it in front of it, go get it. Had a rough game against Chase Claypool. Turns out Chase Claypool's pretty good, so I wouldn't hold that against him. A little bit sticky when he's coming out of his plant and drive, but his eyes are very good. He's an interesting player. They run so much man coverage and bracket coverage in that Don Brown defense. So he was on an island most of his career. By the way, he missed fall camp in 2019 with some colitis. Still started, didn't have that opportunity to get himself ready for that year. They just can't quit Harbaugh, what can I say? With the 103rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Ernest Jones, linebacker, South Carolina. This is one of my guys. I, I think Ernest Jones is going to be outstanding, and they've been starved for some linebackers there for the Rams. He just hit you, DJ. Uh, no, he, he is physical, you. man. You talk about what he can do off the ball. You'll see him rush off the edge. He's got long arms. And what he did against Kyle Pitts at the line of scrimmage, Kyle Pitts was much better, more competitive this year as a blocker. But Ernest Jones got after him a little bit in that football game. And he's what, in, in scouting, we use the phrase stopping power. When he hits you, it is over. You go right to the ground. So that physicality to go along with his range and versatility, I love that pick. I'd, I'd be in a great mood staying in that house no matter what, but I, I'm, I'm loving this Especially pick. Especially now. With the 104th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Brandon Stevens. Defensive back, SMU. Yeah, and she said defensive back, because I'm curious. He was a former running back at UCLA, transfers to SMU. He played corner, and he's a thick, muscled-up corner. You see him listed at 213 pounds. Here's, a, here's what he was doing at UCLA. You see him in the backfield as running back. Not a bad running back at all, but he transfers. He played pretty well at, at corner once he got out there to SMU. You can see what type of athlete he is once he gets out in the open field. He can run away from you. I think he's actually going to end up making another move. I think he's going to end up being a safety. That, to me, is where he fits best. He gets a little bit grabby down the field as a corner. He can run all day long. He's a great tackler. He's tough, and he's got instincts. That, to me, projects to the safety position. And if nothing else, they just drafted a guy who's going to be hell on wheels on special teams for the Ravens. With the 105th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Baron Browning, linebacker, Ohio State. That concludes night two of the 2021 NFL Draft. Thank you for being among the more than 90,000 fans who have made the draft here in Cleveland so memorable. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at noon for rounds four through seven. Good night. Night two in Cleveland ends with somebody named Browning. Night one began with seven straight offensive players taken for the first time ever. Night two ends with seven straight defensive players being taken and it's a local Ohio State kid. Yeah, we had a Cleveland and a Browning get drafted tonight. Nice. Baron Browning, he played on the edge. He also played off the ball. Does a nice job of working off blocks. I actually like him best when he's got a chance to see it and he can just run and hit. Look at him just go. He can fly. This is a legit, legit speed linebacker. He's got tremendous range. Watch him here working against Trevor Lawrence. Look at the pursuit and just sucks him up there.
on the edge as a blitzer. This was my favorite thing that he did. In fact, I thought some team might just line him up on the edge and cut him loose and see what he can do, Joel, because he's outstanding at that. Like as a Sam. So this, Absolutely. Is, this is what they did with him. They would either cut him loose and let him go after the quarterback or back him up one extra yard at the second level so that he could diagnose and use that speed to go sideline to sideline.